So today we would be looking at frame layout. So now, uh, so we talked about the linear layout and we talked about the relative layout. So normally those layouts are used whenever you have more than one children. But whenever you have such a requirement as now you want to have a layout but that layout will contain only one children. So in that case what we do is we use the frame layout. So as we can see over there, frame layout shines in the layout army whenever you want to add only one children inside the parent. So if you have got the requirement as in the screen, you just have to add one button. So what I would be doing, instead of creating linear layout or the relative layout, I would be adding the frame layout over there. So frame layout can also contain multiple children, but it is more preferred whenever you want to add just one children to the layout. So in that case, we use the frame layout. So frame layout is normally used in splash screen or where we want to add the full screen web view to, okay. So normally, uh, if you if you have if you have used a lot of Android applications, you would be seeing the splash screen that comes. So what does splash screen contains? It just contains the company logo or the company name. So it just have one control, either image view or either text view. So in that case, they use the frame layout. But whenever you want to add more than one widgets inside the layout, you would not be using frame layout. You would be using any other layout, like linear layout or the relative layout. Okay, so let's go through the course snippet for the relative layout, sorry, frame layout. Okay, so now you can see. So what I have done over here, I am trying to add four children. So just to give you the idea on what will happen if you try to add four children inside the frame layout. So what is happening is those children will get added on top of each other. Okay, so you cannot have one children beside other children the children will ultimately get added on top of each other because frame layout can accommodate only one children at a time. So if you try to add any other children, they will get added on the top of the previous children. So let me take you through the code snippet so that it will be more clear to you. So you can see, so what I am doing over here, I am creating the frame layout and I am creating views. So you can see now what I am doing is I am giving the hard-coded width and hard-coded height. So first view which is the bottom view, I am putting the width and height as 250 dp. So I want that view should be having the larger width and larger height. Then I am adding one more view with the different background. So that background you can see those are called as the hexadecimal colors. Okay. So hexadecimal colors are the uh, one of the type of representation of the colors. So if you, if you just go on the Google, you would find the there are a lot of websites which shows you the hexadecimal colors. So you just have to paste that color name over here. So second view, I am having the width and height as 200 dp and I am having the layout margin as 10 dp. So when you say layout margin, so it will get automatically applied to the top, left, bottom and right. So layout margin means applied on all the four edges over there. Uh, so uh, my, uh, that is called as the alpha value. So first two digits which we are seeing over there, those are called as the alpha. So now the alpha is 1, so we are written FF. So even if you omit that, that would not cause an issue. So those are the hexadecimal colors with the alpha value. So first two digit denotes the alpha value of that color. Okay, then we are adding the third view which is having the width and height as 150 dp. So again that view will get added on the top of the second view. Then we are adding the fourth view. So that fourth view will get added on the top of the third view. So you can see as and when I'm starting adding the views, I'm trying to reduce the width and height of those views. So at the view at the very bottom, it will have the larger width and height. View on top of that bottom view, it will have somewhat little width and height. The view which is on top of that another view, it will have lesser width and height. So you can see. So what I'm doing, why I'm doing that because if we keep the equal width and height, so ultimately you would only able to see the top view. You would not able to see the bottom views. So that's the reason we are just assigning those views. And Abhi, I'm not assigning any, any uh, I would say margin to the first view. You can do that, but I'm, I'm not doing that basically. And uh, Mike, in the frame layout, you, you don't have any control over the positioning and all. So no, you cannot do that basically. So you can just add the view and you can give the margins, margins and padding. But you are not able to say center in parent, align parent bottom, align parent right, so no, you cannot do that, unfortunately. 
So that's why frame layout is only preferred whenever you want to create a splash screen with the image, company logo or something like that. So we, we create frame layout in that way. Okay, so you so I would say 99% of the time you would be using frame layout whenever you want to create this splash screen basically. So I got a question from Shanti, can we have the background attribute in other layout or with the other? So yes Shanti, the background attribute is available on each and every layout. So you can give the background to your relative layout also, you can give the background to your linear layout. So yes, for each and every widget you can assign the background table layout. So if you have done the HTML programming or I would say basic HTML programming, you might be aware about the table layout. So table layout works on the concept of rows and columns. So as we know, how, how, what is a table? So even if you have created a table in Microsoft Word, you must be knowing. Normally we have the rows and we have got the columns. So whenever you want to add the children's in the row and column wise manner, you would always prefer using the table layout. So each row in the table layout is represented by the table row which can hold virtually any number of children. <coughs> so you can have n number of children in a row depending on your screen size. And whenever you try to add the children inside the table row, it will always get added in the horizontal manner. So you have to always remember whenever you will try to add the children inside the table row, it will always get added in the horizontal manner. And there is always a support for call span and the row span. So what is in call span and row span is, so let's say I want to have a requirement. So as you can see on the first figure, I want to have first row, but in which I will just have one child, but that child should span itself so that it will take two columns. Then in the second row, I will have two childs and one, each child will have one column. So that is called as call span. So in the call span, you can stretch your child so that it can span multiple columns over there. And same is applicable to the row span. So in the row span, you can span your child so that it can span multiple rows at once. Okay, so that is the concept of row span and call span. So unfortunately, Android doesn't support the row span, so row span cannot be implemented in the table layout. But Android has got the support for the call span. So call span you will see normally so in the login screen. So you have got the edit text and then you have got the buttons below that is uh, submit and reset. So you would see that those buttons are having two columns. One is one first column will be used by the submit button and second column will be used by the reset button. But those text fields they are stretching themselves to two columns basically. And Abhijit, I would again explain what is by mean by the call span and the row span. So basically the call span means, so whenever you want to have a requirement or whenever you have a requirement such that uh, the children which you are adding inside the table, it should span multiple columns. It should stretch itself to the multiple columns. So you can see in the figure one, we have got two rows. In the second row, we have got two columns. In the first row also we have got two columns but what that children is doing, children is spanning itself to those two columns. So you would feel that in the row one we are just having one column. So what it is doing, it is taking the space for both the columns. So that is called a spanning and since it is taking the space for both the columns, so that's why we will call it as the call span. And row span means it is trying to take the space for the two rows over there. So Abhijit, yes, so we can, you can say it, it is a merging, so yes, so I would say that is a very accurate uh, word that you have used, so that will be called as the merging. So in the first row we are merging two columns and in the second figure we are merging two rows over there. Okay, so let's go to the example. So let's say I want to achieve something like this. Okay, so Raj Sekhar, what is mean by call span is, call span means you are trying to merge two columns. So you are creating a widget and it is trying to merge two columns. So that will be called as the call span. So in this figure if you see, I am having the button, so if you see the third row over there, in the third row we have a button 1, but that button 1 it is merging two columns. So it is equal to the width of the two columns, so that will be called as the call span basically. 
and can it merge more than three two so yes Abhijit absolutely you can merge more than two columns also so I will be explaining you that shortly in the code okay so as you can see in this particular figure so here we have got four table rows so we have got table row 1 table row 2 table row 3 and table row 4 okay so let me take you through the code snippet so that it will be more clear to you so let me open that project so I will close that existing project I will open the project and I will point out to the table layout Okay, so again I am getting that rendering issue, so what I will do is I will just wait for that gradle task to get finished. And I have got a question for Vivek, what is a Gradle? So Vivek Gradle is the build tool. So what task Gradle do? So it converts, so it compiles your code and finally it converts your code into the executable code. So you can run it on the mobile. So Gradle what it is doing, basically it is behind the scene, it is compiling your code. Okay, so I will wait till that uh, it is compiling your code. Okay, so yeah. So let me take you through the code snippets. So as you can see over here basically, so what is happening is I am creating the table layout with the match parent and match parent uh, and actually there is no need to give this attribute I would say. Okay, so I'm just giving the table layout with the width and height as match parent, match parent. Then I'm creating one table row over there, and in the table row, what I'm doing, I'm adding the buttons. So I'm adding button one with the text, and I'm adding button two. So since they're getting added in the single row, so what? So single table row. So what will happen? They will get added beside each other. Then what I'm doing? I'm creating one more table row. In that, what I'm doing? I'm adding button one, button two, and button three. So again those are getting added in the single row, so what will happen, they will get added beside each other. So later you have got the table row in which you have a button, but now you are saying that layout span is equal to 2. So when you say layout span is equal to 2, it means you are saying that button 2, uh, so you are saying that whatever button will get added in the third row, it will span itself to the two columns. So what I am saying, it will span itself to the two columns over there. Okay, so if I say layout span as three over there, so what will happen? It will span itself to three columns. So uh, as simple as that. And finally what I'm doing, I'm adding fourth button in the fourth row and I'm saying that layout column as two. So column counting always starts from zero. So you are saying that I want to add that button but it should be present in the 0, 1, 2. So ultimately it should added in the third column basically. Okay, so I got a question. So let's say we have three columns in the first row and five columns in the bottom. So, so yeah, so that's a really good question which is asked by the Mike. So Mike is asking, uh, so if you have the first row which has got three columns and the 
second row which is having the five columns. So my the basic column count of the table will be five. So the basic table uh, column count of the table will be always equal to the highest number of columns which it has. Okay, so so that's 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 a table layout. So nothing complex. Just two attributes that you have to remember. It is layout span and Android layout column. So layout span defines how many layout, uh, how many columns you want to span, and layout underscore column defines in which column you want to explicitly add the control. So here we are passing value as two. It means we are saying that I want to add that. So don't uh, misunderstand understanding it at at second column. So column counting always starts from the zero. So layout column two means actually three. Zero, one, two. So it is will be added in the third column over there. 